Hello there, Pisces. Welcome to your reading. Um, before I start with this reading, let me give you a little bit of context, okay? Um, I feel like this reading is, um, it feels a little bit heavy to me. So I feel that there might have been a lot of longing, a lot of, of nostalgia for a past situation, a past person, uh, thinking about the past about a, a time in your life where you were like at a fork in the road and you felt like this situation, the, the, this, you know, the two paths that were laid out for you, you almost felt like it was very uh, deterministic, meaning if you take one path, you have to forego the other. And whatever path you walk down on, um, you could not backtrack and you know change your mind and go back to the beginning and take the other path and so i feel like there was a situation here a major decision that you have made in your recent past and you are at a point where you're wondering if you made the right decision okay i feel that you don't have all the information yet you don't have all the pieces of the puzzles just yet and I feel that you are thinking about, you know, possibly like, let's rewind. Let's go back to that moment. Um, let's rethink the decision back in that moment, okay? And so when I uh, was shuffling out the spread for you, I saw a flower and it was a, a rose inside a vase and uh, it was like at the end of its life, okay? So it's, it's dried up, it's very wilted. Some of the petals have dried up. So the, the, the rose is brown. It doesn't even have the color anymore. It's just dried and brown. So the vase or the vase is like, there's no water left in it. There's no water left in it. Uh, so it indicates to me that this flower has been sitting there for a very long time. And it's already dried up and withered. And then there are like dried petals that have fallen on the table at the base of the vase and then I was looking at it and it seemed to me like we were rewinding because the flower was like slowly 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 turning back into its color and it was like perking up it was standing upright and then at the very end of that moving picture it was like red and vibrant and the vase, all the petals, like, you know, from the uh, table flew back up into the flower to reattach itself. And then the, uh, the vase was filling up with water. Okay. So I definitely feel like it can be interpreted, you know, two ways. First of all, we're re rewinding to a previous situation so that we can revive something that we thought was dead a revival of something that we thought was long gone a revival of something that we thought was long dead uh, an opportunity to rewind to a previous moment in time so that we can fix the situation okay so wanting to make amends wanting to fix the situation wanting to set things right and then i feel like the other interpretation of it was um there is a situation here where it's done and over with and I feel that you know you as this red flower you are feeling that you're no longer I guess like nourished in the present environment and so you're opting to move elsewhere to put your energy elsewhere where there is you know nourishment okay and so that you can revive yourself so let me just um, explain here. Um, I feel like for many of you, and you know, this can start out dry and then we'll get to like the, the other aspects. I feel like for many of you, you're kind of like that withered flower, especially in a work environment where you feel a little bit drained, uninspired, and you're waiting for the next flood. You're waiting for the next rain. You're waiting for, for newness. You're waiting for like uh, something else to start okay to revive you to bring you back alive to bring like excitement and passion and, and newness into your life for some of you this is a work situation 
And I feel like, you know, there was a decision that was made in the past. We have here the Two of Wands. And the Two of Wands is stereotypically, it's about decision. Do I stay or do I go? Um, if we think about the traditional depiction of the Two of Wands in the Rider right Waite deck, it's the man in the ivory tower. He's got a globe on one hand. He's scanning the horizon, looking down below. And he's holding um, a wand in one hand, and there's another wand behind him that's bolted to the, the tower, okay? So one wand that's bolted to the tower, it's all about, let me stay here. Let me stay in this ivory tower. Let me be isolated from people. It's safe here, it's comfortable here, but at the same time, you're not really growing. And in the other one, the representation of it is about, you know, the whole world. The world is your oyster. The world is yours for the, the taking. The opportunities are out there. You're scanning the horizon. You're obviously a little bit bored, okay? You're obviously aware and, you know, you guys are very, very psychic and, and extremely intuitive. And you know what makes you happy. Okay, and um, I feel like, you know, you, you out of the uh, water signs, you're very much aware of what makes your heart and your soul sing with joy. Um, Cancerian people, they have a really hard time figuring that out. And I feel like, you know, from day to day, from month to month, it fluctuates, right? And I feel like for Scorpio, they know how to put up with a lot. And so for a Scorpio to know what makes them happy, they have an idea of what makes them happy. But then I also feel like because they're capable of putting up with a lot, they tolerate a lot. And they might stay in situations that they're not happy in, hoping for things to turn around for the better. Whereas for you guys, I feel like for you intuitively, you always know what you want and you always know what you don't want, okay? It's about taking the actions that can be a little bit scary for you. And then I also feel like, you know, being decisive, um, picking a route and really sticking to it. I feel like that is, um, that gives you anxiety. And so I feel like there was a decision here. Do I stay or do I go? Do I spread my wings and soar? Or do I stay in this place where it's safe? stable but i'm not really flying i'm not really soaring um so i feel like there might have been some type of a stagnancy when it came to your work environment we have here the knight of pentacles okay knight of crystals knight of pentacles this is a camel and camels they have um you know the capacity to um live in a drought ridden environment right they can go for for a very very long time carrying their load and not have to um refill when it comes to you know their water intake okay so they handle droughts very well they're a draft animal as well so they're used to manual labor they're used to hard work okay and i feel like for many of you you were in a, a work environment where it was it, it was the the work itself was not super inspiring okay it's kind of like in a desert environment there wasn't a lot of room for growth okay um meaning there probably aren't a lot of uh, opportunities for you know um promotions there might not have been a lot of opportunities to do exciting things the landscape day in and day out looks the same everything was very predictable um, I'm also seeing a situation where there might have been a lot of allergens. So I don't know, you might be in a work environment where the environment itself was not completely comfortable, okay? It wasn't pretty, it wasn't inspiring, you didn't have a good view. And I'm seeing a lot of dust, a lot of dust in the air, kind of like this deserty environment. A lot of dust in the air. It's like living, it's like working in a place where there's a lot of like old things, you know, things that collect dust, things that people don't move and clean on a regular basis. And so for a Piscean person, um, I feel like you have to have a certain degree of like um, aesthetic, you know, um, to be pleased aesthetically or, or things have to be aesthetically pleasing. There have to be, there has to be like pretty things or things that are aesthetically pleasing for you to look at or interesting and exciting cases for you to follow up on. Um, even new things for you to do in order for you to really thrive, in order for you to really enjoy the work environment. 
And so I feel like day in and day out, it was a, a situation where financially, I feel like there weren't a lot of opportunities for promotion, for lateral movement. And then I also feel like aesthetically, it wasn't a pleasing environment. I'm just seeing like a lot of books, a lot of dust, a lot of things gathering mold, a lot of just, you know, things that haven't been moving around. So I feel like there was an environment here that was very outdated. It feels to me very outdated, very dusty. Um, things don't really change much. And so I'm sensing that you have been, you know, wanting to spread your wings and fly away and to really soar into a new environment and to really test your skills and test your capabilities and having an opportunity to even challenge yourself, okay? Spread your, it's like a, having an opportunity to really like stretch your learning capabilities, to really challenge you. And so whatever was happening here, the work pays the bills, but it was not satisfying, okay? I feel that you have a lot of people in your environment who really like you, co-workers, supervisors, friends, even colleagues that might, you know, become friends, people that hold you in high regard and people that, you know, really um, either look up to you, okay? And I have here the nine of cups, okay? This is like contentment, okay? Contentment. It's not yet the ten, it's the nine. We're very, very happy here. But at the same time, you know, one is a desert creature. One, the other one dwells in the cold climate. So either way, I feel like it's, um, it's like opposite ends of the spectrum. Okay, so I, I'm, I'm sensing for many of you, um, you might meet people that, uh, who really, really like you, but for whatever reason, there's like a lack of commonality, a lack of an emotional connection with these people. And it's okay to make acquaintances and say, you know, hello and goodbye on a day-to-day -day interaction basis. But when it comes to like having a sense of commonality, you know, liking the same things, frequenting the same areas, talking about the same subjects, or even having the same ideological beliefs, I feel like there was a, a dissonance here with the people that you were around, okay? You might have wanted a lot more out of your life, out of your career, out of your professional progression, but the other people were either very content, they're very happy and stable and they don't really want more. And so the things that you talk about, your dreams and your wishes and your aspirations, I feel like there's a dissonance between what you want and what they want. And as a result, there is definitely an emotional connection lacking between you and them. And I feel that for many of you, once again, intuitively, uh, you are aware of all of these things. You have made a decision here about, you know, walking down a, a new path. I feel like for many of you, the month of February is really bringing about this uh, sense of like, am I making the right decision? Okay. I do see uh, movement away from one situation going into another. So what we have here is where you are, Knight of um, Pentacles, as well as the Two of Wands, okay? Making a choice and gathering your things, this draft animal, so that they can carry your things physically from one location to the next. And then right at the end, we have the Shaman card, which is definitely moving from one institution to another and the Knight of Wands. This is a place where you are feeling very giddy, very happy, very passionate in. You're feeling like very elated, okay? This might have been stagnation with this pentacle suit, but this is fiery passion. This is like room to explore, doing things and projects that are a lot more exciting. And having, I feel, a lot of leeway, no one is looking over your shoulders, you have a lot of independence, and you can do whatever you want, okay? So I see definitely an escalation, and, and let me just remind you, these two energies are very, very similar, right? It's uh, eerie how similar the, the depictions are. So this is two of wands, and now we are shifting into the Hierophant. So I feel like this environment was like a drift, okay? You don't know where you're going to land. This bird is struggling. Do I land on this branch or the other branch? 
okay? Or do I wait for something better? If I wait for something better and I have to keep flying and have to keep, you know, flapping my wings, I'm going to tire myself out. Whereas in this depiction, this is a bird that has, you know, spent many many years flying. He or she has already mastered the movement, the techniques, the craft. And so, if you're shifting into this environment with the hierophant, it is going to be extremely stable. Your wingspan has really developed. Your muscles have really shaped up. Your bone structure is adapted to this environment where you can really see and and soar, and you know. Travel wherever you want to your heart's desire. So I feel like for many of you, you might have you might have wanted a job that involves you know a lot more newness, a lot more opportunities for you to see the world, to travel, to experience new location, to deal with new things. And in this environment, things were a little bit stagnant here, and I feel like it was comfortable and good. You had everything that you need. the 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 salary paid the bills, but it wasn't. It didn't really, you know, strike a chord with you, right? And then I also feel in this environment, this is where you want to be, because there's newness. There's opportunities to deal with a lot of people from different walks of life. There's a lot more. I feel like the environment is a lot more relaxed. You're surrounded by people as well. Who are a lot more open-minded? I'm sensing, and then I keep, you know,、uh, I'm looking at this eagle, this this bird, right? This eagle, the eagle has a very very keen eye. So I feel like in this environment, it's a lot more challenging. But I feel that you need that. You need to be challenged. You you have wanted to spread your wings for so long, and I feel as if. This right here is the opportunity for you to do that, and I do feel this opportunity coming in for many of you in the month of April. Okay, so this is where you are. This is where you are headed. Right in the middle, we have the Three of Swords, which is the separation. So I definitely feel for many of you, there's movement. There's moving from one job to the next, moving from one house to another, moving from one relationship to the next as well, and. With this card, the depiction is really beautiful. It is release and recovery, okay? Releasing something so that something new can come in. Releasing this situation and telling yourself, it's for my greater good because where I am shifting and what's greeting me on the other side is this new opportunity that's going to help me grow. That's going to provide me with so much more excitement, and we're not talking excitement in a frivolous way. In that, you know, the news always good, or it's like the grass is always greener. We're not talking about that. We're talking an opportunity for you to really prove yourself, and we're talking an opportunity for you to travel, for you to like,、um, for your heart to really be content, and for you to continue to grow to your full potential. Because your wings needs to be stretched, needs to be.、Um, I want to say like, you weren't living to your full potential here, okay, Pisces. I do see once again.、Um, there's doubt coming through from your end, especially for the first two weeks of、um, February, okay. So nine of shells, nine of cups. I'm happy here. Looking back at the past, okay. And all these shells are laid out in front. Okay, taking stock of what we have. Literally, being very grateful. I I do see for many of you,、uh, everything that's going on in on in your life right now. You are very very grateful. You're grateful for the home you live in, for the partner that some of you、uh, will you know take into the next phase of your life with you. And I do feel for many of you, you might be in a relationship here with an Earth sign, a Taurus, a Virgo, or a Capricorn, or even、um, a, a Fire sign, a Sagittarius, an Aries, or a Leo. And you're taking, you're opting to take this person into the next phase of your life with you because they have proven to be a stable, dependable, reliable, and honestly, fun and loving person that you want to share your life with. And so you're taking stock. You're very, you're you're conscientious and of everything that you have in your life, 
and you're saying that prayer of gratitude but deep down as well we have the moon and the moon can be about confusion it can be like um, looking at the fog and not knowing which way to go okay it can also deal with self-doubts it can also deal with a situation where we're doubting did I make the right choice it's falling right on top of this big decision that you made here do I stay or do I go and you f you might feel like you don't have all the information you might feel like you know that sense of excitement mixed with anxiousness like I wonder how it's gonna work out I wonder how the new situation is gonna pan out for me I wonder if I'm well equipped to make this change at this present moment in time I wonder what the future really holds for me so I feel more excitement than nervousness from your end because you are aware that like that flower the longer you stay the longer you're going to be wasting those best years of your life okay it's like the the flower is at the it, it, it is was at the end of its life it has already dried up the petals have already fallen down it has soaked up all the nourishment in that situation and so by staying there you're allowing a situation to stagnate you're prolonging it and things are not getting better things are just you know happening but they're not getting better and so while I don't feel like something bad is on the horizon I just feel like you have extracted all the nourishment that you could get from a situation all the knowledge you have already learned everything that you've needed to learn in that situation and so as a spiritual advice for you is you know opt for the new for this month of February walk boldly and bravely walk very very boldly and bravely every time I see this card I think of the Lion King um, it's the Disney cartoon for those of you who are not familiar with it I, I would imagine most people are familiar with it but it's um it's it's the um, the boar and um, I'm reminded of that scene where they're on the log and they're singing that song Hakuna Matata it's like you know don't worry everything is gonna be fine so live your life with that sense of wonder live your life with that sense of gratitude and also know that the universe will provide you everything that you need in your environment in order to excel in order to be very happy and in order to thrive in this new environment because it was created for you so walk boldly don't look back at the past and don't wonder if I made the right choice you are divinely guided to make this choice and the roadblocks obstacles and things like that will clear up for you which will be kind of like confirmation for you that you're walking down the right path because the universe has deemed that path to be for you okay so I feel that uh, Pisces for those of you who are you know questioning whether or not you made the right choice to walk away from a situation or work situation relocate even leaving a partner behind I feel that you needed a gentle reminder that the universe has been orchestrating this working behind the scenes in order to, to create this new path for you and I feel that the universe is very happy that you're taking this path to develop to your full potential okay so that's what I'm seeing here and um, there are a few other things that I do want to talk about okay um, this new environment is going to provide all the nourishment that you need okay this is the desert animal and this is an animal that dr that thrives in a very uh, thick um, um, I want to say like um, a, a rainforest okay with like greenery with water with life with shelter with rain so this is a, a really rich moist environment and what I mean is there are a lot of opportunities here okay a lot of opportunities for the taking and we also have as well ace of pentacles a new job on the horizon 
So for many of you, this is very much work related, okay? Income related, work related. And then I'm also feeling as well, um, for those of you who might have been in a relationship and one partner was like shouldering a lot of the responsibilities, um, like especially the finances, one partner was like shouldering the financial responsibilities, I feel like the other partner is able to match up, okay? There's a huge income boost coming in for many of you and I, I'm really happy to see this for you. I'm happy to see this for all the signs, but I feel like for water signs, uh, when your income is really good, emotionally, you just feel a lot better. You're, you're just emotionally in a very good space when your income, when your finances are stable. And so I'm really happy to see this for you. And so this indicates to me a brand new beginning. And look at this um, panda. He's a, he's a little bit like um, nervous, okay? There's that like, wow, I can't believe it. All of this is for me. And uh, pandas are just so cuddly. Apparently they're not very smart animals. And like, apparently that, that's just a thing. Um, but they're so cute and cuddly. But there's also, I'm drawn to that um, kind of like scared look on his face. You know, it's like... I don't know if I should tread carefully. I don't know if this is the right path. I feel like there's a lot of um, doubt. I don't feel like it's self-doubt. I feel like you're doubting the decisions that you have just made. You're doubting the new environment. You're doubting whether or not you can thrive, okay? You're doubting whether or not you can be successful. And I feel like they're saying here, go boldly and the universe will provide for you, okay? So once again, confirmation for you guys, all right? Um, I do want to talk a little bit about um, this flower that I sold. Um, I'm sensing for many of you, um, there might be a message here and it is particularly, in, in particular, excuse me, it is about love and relationships. And uh, I feel for many of you, I feel for many of you, um, I, I'm seeing a situation here where somebody was uh, making promises, okay? We'll get married next month. We'll move in together, you know, uh, a few months from now. We'll have a child at a later date. And I feel this element about somebody making promises and uh, not being able to f uh, follow through with the promises or or someone kept procrastinating okay like a month later we'll move in and then it drags on to like four months and five months and six months and i feel like the other person is tired of waiting so wherever you fit in this situation i feel like you're starting to get anxious i, I feel that you're starting to to see the the truth you know where like maybe that person wasn't serious about me because I feel that you tell yourself if he or she was very serious about me and if they really wanted to do this with me they would find a way they would have uh, done it already they wouldn't make these false promises they, they, they wouldn't keep delaying the timeline they wouldn't keep procrastinating they would already be on top of it and so I feel like the moon energy it comes out to remind you that you already know the truth. If you are asking, and I feel like it might have been um, last month where, I, I can't remember if it was December or January, where one of the readings for Pisces was, it seems to me that you were looking for answers, okay? And I'm seeing a repeat of this energy where there's somebody making promises to you. And I feel like, It's time for you to look at the situation for what it is and to really think back at how many times this person has made these promises with you and, and, and have disappointed you and have not been able to follow through. And I feel, you know, you love this person and you're a very kind person and you're also very sympathetic. And because of that, you're just like, well, you know, maybe they had... A, uh, maybe they, they were dealing with, with other things. Maybe this, maybe that. And I feel like you might have been very understanding, very patient with this person. 
you might have, you know, and we all are in, uh, we are all guilty of doing this for people that we love. We make excuses for the other person. You know, maybe they were busy. Maybe they're really, you know, stressed out at work. Maybe they're trying to save up their finances. Maybe we can't move in together right now because, you know, um, it's too soon. I feel like you might have been making ex excuses for the other person, giving them the benefit of the doubt because Piscean people are very good at forgiving. Okay, your heart is really big. That's what I feel like, yeah, like the, the Piscean person, their hearts are really, really big. People can take chunks out of it, but you know, the hole is so big that you're just like, oh, I don't mind. I don't mind. It's okay. If that person needs it, it's okay. They can, you know, do that. But at the end of the day, I feel like something happened in December. And then something's happening now in February where you, you're just like, wait a minute, this is a repeat. Wait a minute, this is a rewind. Wait a minute, this was promised to me before. Why wasn't it given to me in a timely manner? Wait a minute, they made that promise in the past and they have not delivered and it's like two months later. So I feel like you're starting to see the reality of that situation. You're starting to see that maybe this person was not budging. They're not going anywhere. They're not planning to make a move. They're not planning to change their way of life for you. You have been here, literally, you know, holding the bag, okay? With all those shells at your feet, ready to make this plunge with this person. And yet, it feels a little bit icy and cold. And I, I'm sensing that they're not budging. I'm sensing that they have no plans to follow through. I'm sensing as well. If that's the case, they're going to be watching you exit the picture, flying away, because they were not quick enough on the uptake. They were not quick enough to deliver on these things that were promised to you. And I feel that for many of you, you might be aware of this, okay? And um, I have, you know, very strong earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. And then I have really strong fire sign, um, Sagittarius, Leo, and Aries. So I'm sensing here that there is some truth that you have always known, but th these truths might have been very difficult to accept. And now you're accepting, and I feel that many of you are no longer communicating with this person, uh, hearing their excuses giving them the time of day I feel like you might have just you know turn a blind eye you might have like turned your back and not willing to listen to any more of their BS I don't feel like you're upset I feel that you've accepted it because now you know I, f I don't feel like you're upset um, what's really strange is in the Aquarius reading I feel like somebody was upset okay but I feel like with you, it's it's acceptance. It's like, okay, I see it for what it is now. I see them for who they are now. I see this is situation exactly the way it's seen by other people. And so we're no longer starry-eyed. We're no longer giving a situation the benefit of the doubt. I feel for many of you too, maybe this work situation will get better. Maybe I'll get a promotion. Maybe, you know, they'll um, put in a good word for me. Maybe I'll be a supervisor. Maybe I'll get promoted. Maybe I'll get that um, vertical transfer. And then I feel like, you know, there was a lot of waiting, a lot of promises that were not followed through. I feel like somebody was making promises to you because they wanted to impress you. You know, um, I'm seeing this big boss guy who is trying to hit on like a subordinate and then making all these promises, oh, I'll get you promoted. Um, you know, I'll put in a good word for you. And he doesn't wield a lot of power. So he, he's like trying to, you know, impress the other person, trying to hype himself up as this big man that he has a lot of weight in the world. But then his words are very empty. His promises are very empty. 
okay? That's for a few of you, not all, not all of you. And then I'm also seeing like an ex-partner or like a partner that has made promises to you. The, the, the thing that I'm seeing here is nothing really hurts you, Pisces. You're not upset, you're not hurt. You, you've just, you know, accepted. Oh, I, I see it for what it is now. So it's almost as if you have known this all along, okay? And you're being awakened to the, the reality and, and that's why you're accepting it. And uh, I'm also seeing a situation here. We have the devil. I believe this is the devil. This is the shadow. Self-empowerment and ambition, okay? Self-empowerment and ambition. So this is kind of like the opposite of the damsel in distress, okay? This is about self-sufficiency. This is about being able to take care of ourselves, not waiting for the knight in shining armor, regardless of what gender you are, okay? The cards are not gender specific and my stories are not gender specific. So it could be like a male that's like a damsel in distress who needs saving who needs somebody to come in and, and, you know, give them some guidance, okay? Whatever your, your gender is, it, it doesn't really matter. And so this is about self-empowerment, being self-sufficient, okay? And not needing another person to come into the, the picture to save us. Save us from this job, save us from this relationship, save us from this uh, potentially, you know, unhealthy relationship that we're in, waiting for the next best thing so that we can jump ship. This is about going out there and creating opportunities for yourself, or at least taking up opportunities as they come knocking at your door and doing so unapologetically, okay? Not having to uh, apologize. I'm so sorry, you know, I, I, I know that I told you I would work here for five years and then you would give me that promotion. However, it's going on seven years now and I have not seen that promotion, so I'm leaving not having to apologize, you know, not having to apologize to anybody for your decisions, for your life decisions, for, for wanting to better yourself. Because honestly, the people that really care about you and that wants you to develop to your full potential and wants the best for you, if they see you going for a promotion, they're supposed to be happy for you, right? If they see you leaving a, um, a bad relationship, they're going to be very happy for you. And those are the people that ultimately matter. And so I feel like you're taking, um, you're shining light on a situation and you're realizing all the people in your life who is really truthful and I feel like sincere with the things that they're promising you. I have here the Ten of Swords, okay? Um, I, I'm sensing here, life is, is too short, like your, your mantra, time is limited, life is too short, I don't have time to, to wait around for promises, I don't have time to stay in situations hoping and dreaming and wishing that they're going to follow through with their promise to promote me to transfer me, to move me. I'm going to go out and create those opportunities for myself. I'm going to go out especially to twirl myself around this new opportunity. I feel like you're seeing something that you want and you're going for it. And you don't need to apologize for grabbing life by the horns. You don't need to apologize for the actions that you're taking to better yourself. You don't need to explain yourself to people who are trying to keep you stuck because they see you growing and thriving and moving on as a major threat to themselves. So I feel this is a very, very transformative month where you know who's real with you and you know who's not, okay? I don't think that it's painful. I don't think that you're hurt over it. I don't think that you're upset. I just feel like, you know, in the spirit of clarity, you're getting the information you need. And you're, you, you see, you know, people's true colors. 
you see things for what they are. And that is very empowering. Okay, Pisces. Um, I also feel like for many of you, transitioning um, with the Hierophant card, it is about you know taking relationships to the next level. But I also feel like you are very discerning. You know, is this person worth me taking the the um, to the altar? Is this person like worth me moving in with? You're starting to see your worth. You're making these very conscious. And um, I want to say like, um, oh, that word just came and went. You're making a very conscious and a very calculated decision. You know, is this person going to be good for me? Do Are they even worthy of me bringing home to meet mom and dad and my best friend? Are they even worth walking down to the altar with? Are they even worth waiting for? And so you're reassessing a lot of things, which is good, Pisces. We always need to take stock, okay? You're taking stock very early on in the month of February. And you're realigning yourself based on what you feel is worthy in your life, okay? Uh, there was a card that came out. And um, I want to talk about this last. We have here the Two of Cups. And the Two of Cups is all about, you know, having that kindred spirit, okay? Finding people who really understand this. Having a partner who really appreciates us and supports us. Even if they don't agree with us, they support us. And so, this reading is all about finding a person that understands you. Finding reciprocity. If they make promises, they will deliver. Okay, and finding an environment where you can thrive in, where things feel like vibrant and robust and exciting and not so dry, okay? I'm really happy to see this for you, Pisces. I hope it provides you with the answers that you need, okay? Um, once again, uh, for those who are still emailing me about private readings, I don't do those anymore. But I do have a link in the description box below for a uh, friend. Her name is Bridget. She's based out of Sacramento, California, and uh, she is a very amazing reader. For those of you interested in a reading for yourself or some, for somebody who might need some spiritual advice, I highly recommend that you get a reading with Bridget. Her link is in the description box below. Um, if you click on that link, it'll take you to her webpage where you can schedule uh, the appointment for yourself, okay? It's uh, very user-friendly, okay? I will talk to you later, and I wish you all a very happy Valentine's Day for those who are celebrating, and a very happy early birthday for those celebrating their birthdays the beginning of, uh, I'm sorry, at the end of February, all right? I wish you all the best, Pisces. Take care of yourself, okay? And I'll talk to you soon.